The Alaskan Peninsula, rugged land, freezing water, and hostile weather conditions, not to mention hairy actors with a dangerous reputation. This is where Bertrand Loyer and his crew have come to tell the story of some ordinary fish and their extraordinary fate. His idea is to apply the resources and language of feature films to a wildlife documentary. Filming the salmon's death scene from the grizzly bear's point of view is easy. The problems start when you turn the camera around. Here's an explanation. For this episode of Life on Fire, we wanted to tell a story of the salmon whose habitat was destroyed, so they were forced to find a new volcano. So to tell the story, we had to use a strange thing called a cam trap. It's a kind of dolly, which we put on ladders. And I can hear the seaplane behind me now, which is bringing the ladders that we need. The pilot is John Berryman. He has a lot of experience piloting seaplanes, and he's retiring next year. Usually he can even maneuver the plane on his own. Hey, John. Yeah, it's amazing. Pretty lucky today. Congratulations for the flight. The simple yeah. ladder can, <laughs> with a bit of imagination, allow the viewer to get into the skin of our heroes, the salmon. To film the point of view, I want the camera to be at the same level as the water. And we create a constant movement of the fish who head upstream to where they were produced. When the ladder is in place and the cart which is holding the camera is in stay on the waves, we are ready to follow the salmon as they swim up river. Just like in a studio, apart from the wind and the tide. Turnover, action. At the mouth of the Chenik River, the camera on wheels has mastered the art of swimming with the salmon. And all it took was a few days standing around in icy water. But the predators are keeping their distance. They seem to be scared of the ladder. The only solution is to let them get used to it. Unfortunately, time is short. When they're not running away, the bears feign indifference. The last adult salmon are leaving the ocean, and the crew has still not filmed the bears from the salmon's point of view, despite many attempts. They need to face the facts. The grizzly bears will also need to get used to this strange apparatus. Which has come to disturb their annual salmon fest. After countless unsuccessful attempts, the last day of the shoot arrives. The bears are just starting to tolerate the moving cameras. But why don't these mighty carnivores attack the puny humans fidgeting around behind their lumps of metal? Especially since Bertrand and his crew are not exactly keeping their distance. 
One of the reasons we choose to film the salmon here in Cheney Creek is because we are very near the Augustine volcano for one, and also because we can get very close to the grizzly bears. Apart from knowing about bears and their behavior, we don't have a gun. We have no tear gas, nothing to protect us from the bears. All we have is a guide telling us what to do and what not to do, which allows us this amazing proximity to the bears. It's been tough, but the shots everyone's been working so hard to get are finally in the can.